Okay, I think I'll press okay. it. There you go. So uh, to start off with, hi. <laughs> Hello. Would you like to say your name and where you are? So I'm Volha Shalapava and I'm in Toronto. Hmm. Okay. And the first big question is, who are you? Who are you as a person, as a human being? And I mean, you can talk about any aspect of yourself you want, your values, your qualities, your passions, whatever you'd like. Mm -hmm. I see. I was about to say like, I'm a human being <laughs> at first, but you already said it. And uh, if I can talk about my uh, passions and interests, um, I don't know. I think I'd like to take everything slow. So like every activity that I can be like slow, like I'm good at. So like I like cooking, I like, uh, you know, drawing and, uh, you know, I sculpt a bit. So yeah, so like slow walks, uh, being with pets, uh, like spending time with friends and family. So like if it's not too intense and not too many people around. So I'm kind of like, like I'm a slow person. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I've never heard anyone describe themselves and their activities like that. Mm. Is that an easel behind you? Yeah, is it that is. That was a painting? Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you a painter as well? Very rarely, but I find it uh, like really beneficial Like if, I, if I'm in a mood. And yes, that's my... <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to say? No, look, I, I'm a therapist for sure because I've been doing... Uh, Mm, like psychotherapy, like I've been psychotherapist for like most of my life, uh, like since I'm, since I was 19 years old. So I finished uh, two Gestalt institutes. So like one in Belarus, Minsk, and one in Toronto, Canada. And the first one I finished in um, 2004. And the second one I finished in 2016. So like, and uh, all the time in the between, I've been practicing like most of the years. So like I've that's been quite a journey and it influenced my life and uh, it's a big part of my personality I would say you know being a gestalt person. Hmm. Yeah. So how would you say that gestalt has influenced you and who you are how has it affected you? It's interesting because uh, like I can tell you about one disadvantage that gestalt uh, have in my life you know before gestalt I can blame everyone around me like with my problems and now I, I cannot do it anymore, you know, so I can see my parts like in any <laughs> uh, difficulties, difficulties I have. And uh, yeah, so like basically I have to deal with my own issues. So and uh, like, yeah, it become hard blaming others. <laughs> mm, yeah, it, it ruins that for a lot of people. It takes the yeah. fun out of it. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Yeah. So another question for you about your person mm -hmm. is uh, what comes to mind as an event or a set of circumstances in your life that has really influenced who you are? You know, um, before I started studying Gestalt, like I, um, I was studying uh, in Belarusian State University and every teacher was like, they, they were like, pretty much the same. They were like, coming to the class and they were teaching us like some theory and they were living. And, you know, nothing like catches my attention, like my emotions. Um, and it, there was like one particular teacher who were actually not just teaching our like, us theory. Uh, like he was talking to us. He was talking about like our emotions, like how we, and I was studying psychology by the way, you know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, and uh, he was actually uh, more curious about like our reactions to different events than to like, you know, tests and, you know, articles. And right. it was like, it was disturbing and pleasant at the same time. And I got really curious, like, who is he? Like, what's, uh, like, what kind of like philosophy like he's like following his life. And he was actually a gestalt therapist, like my first gestalt therapist in my life. So, and, uh, and he became my first teacher. So, uh, because in Minsk, uh, there was like several, uh, like, in, like, not several institutes, but like, it could be like a several groups, like a mm -hmm. first year groups. And uh, I started studying Gestalt uh, with him. So, and then I changed group a couple of times, but it was my first person, my first introduction to Gestalt. Like, I remember that day, like until today. <laughs> it was like, what is he doing? Why is he interested? 
-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, and would you say it was that teacher or does someone else come to mind as a person who has really had an impact or an influence on your person? There's like many people actually and and several chains of events but um, I want to say my mom but it would be <laughs> uh, like very predictable you know like my parents you know because uh, like first like we like we want to be like them and then like we don't want to be like them and then we actually notice that we're exactly like parents <laughs> So yes, my mom and my dad, uh, they were people who like really influenced me and um, yeah, and they still do. They're like very important people in my life. Yeah. And like, if, I, if, I, if I answer your question. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. And I mean, you can say as much or as little about how mm -hmm. they influence you or the way that they influence you as you'd like. You don't have to say more if you don't want to. You know, sometimes uh, like the most influence I get from people who I find like very different from me. Like if I see the person, it's like, like oh my God, there's like, oh, that person like nothing like me. And uh, sometimes like I say it like with admiration and sometimes I say it like with like not so much admiration, but uh, either way, uh, after some time, like sometimes it's pretty quickly, sometimes like it takes a long time. Like I just realized like it's, like it's also my qualities, you know, so I actually, like I'm really interested in, in humans, like how they think, how they react, like how they feel, how they make choices. But also like I'm interested like in like in individual humans. So like not like in a human, like humanity <laughs> as a whole. Uh, so maybe like that's why like I don't really like uh, group therapy. So like I never do groups. Um, even though like a lot of therapists they find like easier than work one on one, so like I prefer the like coziness and intimacy like of like one on one therapy, and uh, and I'm actually really grateful for my choice like that I made uh, many years ago because each day like I love my job and like each person is a treasure like it's basically like like a treasure box and I feel like really honored like when people share their life with me. Yeah. So you went through your training in these different places, and I'm curious what it is about Gestalt in particular that has kept your attention. Like, what is it that fascinates you or attracts you? Mm -hmm. You know, look, if we um, translate Gestalt from German, like it uh, means like a form or shape. So basically, when my clients ask me, like, like what is Gestalt, like I say, like, well, like it's a therapy of structure. So basically I uh, help my clients build a better, like more functional, like more pleasurable structure, like in their lives. But what exactly I like about Gestalt, it's um, uh, respect that, that um, approach pays like to people in their struggles, you know, because uh, like what attracts me the most about Gestalt is like, if I have like, you know, like any struggles, if I have like any, um, you know, pain in my life. Like I cannot just like cut it, like throw it in the garbage. Like, like, oh, you don't need it anymore. Just like get rid of it. So it's actually, um, it's like, it was a coping mechanism at once. And it's some like one day, like it saved our lives, like in the, in the past. So uh, I like that approach when I, I don't have to like, just remove like a piece of myself and just like go for it. And just like uh, continue life without the piece. Like I just uh, like to think about like importance of each piece like of us and uh, maybe like if it's like a older structure and doesn't work anymore so like, like we use like the same pieces like we just build something new yeah hmm. and another question would be whether this has been something that you feel you're sort of alone in or do you feel like you're part of a gestalt community does that mean anything to you yeah it, it does like honestly um I don't feel like that we have like a very close community in Toronto or maybe like I'm like 
just like it's like me personally not really included like like i don't know <laughs> and uh and i'm still part of the like belarusian community uh but i think i have like like before um like many years in Toronto, like, like when I just came to Toronto, I was actually hoping to find that community and I was looking for it. But I unfortunately haven't found that community. So maybe maybe it's still building itself. Like maybe, maybe there's like a bits and pieces that's still uh, has not came like to like something like bigger. Mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah. Like, I mean, I, like I have, some like, ther like therapist friends here so like it's not like i'm completely alone and uh, i believe the psychotherapy is not uh, a profession like where you can be alone like you know right. like you need your colleagues yeah but uh it's not a large group it's like it's it's uh, it's just individuals that like i like really cherish and you know see time to time <laughs> and talk mm -hmm. to them. but it sounds like it's something that you believe exists like it's I don't know, to be honest, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe it's like a unicorn, maybe like they're, they're there somewhere. <laughs> maybe I just can't see them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, or, or maybe like, because I finished uh, Gestalt Institute of Toronto, like in 2016. Uh, so maybe like each, each group, like when they were studying together, maybe like they feel like, you know, like communal support and, you know, sense of community. And since I'm, finished the school like four years ago so like I'm kind of you know has been drifting away a bit mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah interesting I mean I I enjoy the community and I find it kind of sad when somebody says that you know they they don't feel it or that they've felt excluded because there I've noticed that everybody answers this so differently there are so many different levels of connection mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's it's definitely an identity, like the Gestalt identity or the Gestalt practice mm -hmm. that seems to lend itself to people connecting. So yeah. There, I guess yeah. there are unicorns somewhere. Yeah. You know, like I don't feel excluded uh, necessarily. Like I just feel like it's it's not um like it's not really formed yet. Mm -hmm. You know, so like people are so busy like to meet like, the requirements of uh, you know like to become like registered psychotherapist or like they like just like so preoccupied like with getting like hours of supervision therapy and uh, like direct client contact so <laughs> like it's not too much time like to think about like building a community so i don't know to be honest <laughs> okay that's fair yeah. mm -hmm. so uh, another question for you would be you can answer this either you know personally or within gestalt what would you say have been some of the most significant challenges that you faced challenges mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know like i would say keep going you know like uh, uh, keep believing your dream and look like, like my dream and uh, keep actually like, pursuing that because uh, you know like I came to Canada like I think 12 13 years ago and I didn't speak English at all like I knew like I knew maybe like 20 words and uh, and I was already like practicing like psychotherapist back home and I didn't want to change my profession it would be probably like, so much easier like if I just like decide to be like accountant, you know, like, just right. like, finish maybe like like a year course or something, and you know like, just be like normal <laughs> citizen, you know, like making money, like going to work. But I felt like I couldn't do that, and it takes me like such a long time, you know, like to work, you know, like not the most pleasant jobs ever, you know, like going to school to learn English and then like finish like Gestalt Institute here. And it was like a long, long, long journey. I would say it took me eight years, like from like from like a zero, like to like not a hundred, but like to feel pretty much accomplished. And those eight years, like I, I just, I had several times when I just, okay, like maybe, like maybe just need to stop. Like maybe it's not uh, realistic. Like maybe it's not, mm you know <laughs> like even logical to want to 
to want what you want. And uh, like I had to um, kind of, you know, cheer myself up each time. So I was like, come on, like you won't be happy doing anything else. So just like, just continue, okay? Like just, just step by step. So it was like the biggest challenge for me, like to just keep going. That is that is really hard. I mean, this is like a second level of professionalism and training. And so many of the therapists who have immigrated, I've heard about the processes that they've had to go through to revalidate and at the same time set up a whole new life at a new place. It's not it's not a simple process. Yeah. So how how did you do that? How was you know what was it that made that possible? Like you said, you like slow processes, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, <laughs> I was actually telling myself, like, okay, like, even like, even if you move step by step, like, you still can reach that mountain, you know, so, and who helped me? That's a good question. Uh, there was like, um, one a faculty in Gestalt Institute, uh, his name is Tony Greco, or like Antonio Greco. And he was my the biggest support at the time. So he was my uh, personal therapist at first like when i just started institute and then he became my supervisor and uh like i'm i'm forever grateful like for his support like you know like a professional and just human support when he told me like he could even tell me like like in a human level like you know like, just don't give up like just continue okay <laughs> so yeah and i think like i'm there like where i'm at which is you know partially because of him you know yeah and he's a great therapist you know himself <laughs> good yeah well he's, he's still... the one who recommended that i that i speak to you so he thinks very highly of you as well yeah yeah so we're still in touch <laughs> That's yeah. nice. mm -hmm. okay well on on the other side of that question is not the challenging and the difficult stuff but what would you say would be one of the highlights or one of your greatest memories and I mean, that can be as a therapist or as a client or just one of those like beautiful moments. Beautiful moments. You know, like uh, maybe, uh, maybe it's a bit too personal, but uh, I would like to share it with you. Um, you know, like when I came to Canada, it was like pretty challenging and it was challenging financially as well. So, and, uh, and after a couple of years, um, like I started actually making a like, decent money so like I could afford, you know, like a, like a the lifestyle like I actually wanted. But in my brain, I could not believe that, that I'm like, I'm like where I'm at. So like I still, I was still like thinking that like, I'm just like immigrant, like I, I can be, you know, like, like, a, you know, hungry or homeless, like every day. And one day, like, I don't know how, but I actually, I finally noticed that I can, you know, like I can support myself, like, you know, like I can buy the like, food I want, the clothing I want, like, you know, I, I travel, you know, like I fully support myself financially for a bunch of years. And I did not notice that change. It was amazing. So like that change was not integrated into my mind. And I remember like very particular day, like when I actually noticed finally, like, you know, like you're fine. Like no more, you know, fear, like no more anxiety about like, like what are you, what are you going to eat tomorrow? I don't know, like maybe, <laughs> maybe like very, like sounds like very like morbid or sad, but. No. Yeah. No, it but... sounds kind of important actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, and as a therapist right now, like I, I keep noticing that my clients have a lot of achievements. They have like so much strength. They have like so many like great qualities that has not been integrated in, in their, their personalities. So they have everything, but they like don't they don't see it. They don't notice it. They don't use it. Mm -hmm. It's like kind of they just like they're at the corner. Right. So and uh, like one of my. <laughs> goal in therapy just like make them see who they are not even like build something new but just like just see like what what they have already mm -hmm. because i know myself that like i could not notice my achievements for like a bunch of years mm. yeah mm. wow 
Mm -hmm. and, and what is your practice? Is there a particular thing that you do? Is there a community that you work with? How are you using Gestalt? I usually say that I work with adults uh, and with... Um, <laughs> they act like adults or... <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I don't take uh, the therapy with people who are like under 18 year old because I don't have uh, enough training. And uh, and I personally think like it's it's not my area of practice. Like mm -hmm. I would not be really great at it. So like I work with adults and uh, I work with a like, range of issues. Basically when people like feel not comfortable with themselves and with, other, with others. And uh, presently I, I live in a gay area. So, and I work at a clinic, like in the middle of gay area. So most of my clients, they're like LGBTQ plus people. And I really enjoy working there. Yeah. So it just, it just happens. You know? <laughs> so, and it's, I would say like it's 50, 50, like, like 50% of men, 50% of women. So like it's, it was like, I know some clients, they like see like more like women, like some like specialized like in like men therapy but it's kind of like equal in my practice yeah okay. so that's what you're doing right now and I guess really the last question that I have is where are you going I mean what would you like to do with this and also on the other hand where do you think Gestalt could or should be going in the future mm -hmm. wow that's a huge question <laughs> You know, about my um, personal projects, um, that's very ambitious projects, but I would like to write a couple of books and not like professional books. Like I, like if, like if you know, like if people know like Irvin Yalom, mm -hmm. so he was actually like writing like his like a psychotherapy stories, like about like his practice, like and current clients. So I have uh, several like absolutely breathtaking um, like therapeutic cases and I already got an agreement from those clients so like I can write about them so like oh. I would really like to write a book like in a like in a yellow style so because uh, I think it's important to write like therapeutic books uh, for like for just like regular people who are like not therapists so like just like any person can open the book and read and understand like what they read Mm -hmm. and, like, and like, see what happens in therapy yeah exactly mm -hmm. yeah and um uh how i see the future like i cannot say about gestalt but uh, i would like to see one change uh in canada in ontario uh because like right now like we're a regulated profession so like we're like you know registered here and uh unfortunately like to get uh, like a status as an RP, like like registered psychotherapist, like there is like no requirement for personal therapy. So oh. there is like, mm -hmm, yeah. So, and like, you know, like to graduate from Gestalt Institute, like, like you need to accomplish, like you need to finish uh, like a bunch of hours. Like it's, I think it's 50 right now. Like you need to finish 50 hours like of personal therapy. But like to become like, reg like registered therapist, like you don't have to have a single hours of like personal therapy. So like there's like a theory, it's like a working with clients, like supervision, like everything included, and everything perfect. But uh, not everybody finished Gestalt Institute, like a like bunch of, or like, like a lot of people finish like other institutions. And uh, some institutions like might not include that in a program. Mm -hmm. And I honestly find it very concerning that some of the therapists, they start a uh, private practice or like, like any like not private practice, like, without a single hour of personal therapy. Yeah, so I would like, I would like the change to be honest, like in the future, so like, so actually like therapists, you know, not afraid to open that can of worms <laughs> themselves, like before they actually, you know, start opening something like with their clients, within their mm. clients. Yeah, I would like to see that change. Mm. Yeah. And would you get involved in, you know, a, a a regulatory body would you get involved in being part of those kinds of committees uh, i believe not like i'm, <laughs> I'm really send I'm, a letter and ask them to please i'm super not organized person <laughs> to be <laughs> honest yeah and it's like it takes like a lot of um, you know like those qualities to be mm -hmm. 
part of those projects. Yeah. yeah, just when I when I ask that, I'm noticing that almost I don't think anybody who I've interviewed has actually said, oh, yes, I'm on one of these gigantic organizing committees. Yeah, but that's a lot. That's a whole yeah. different kind of person, I think. Yeah, you know, look, I'm not narcissistic enough at all. You know, like, oh. I don't, have, yeah, like, I, I have that part of myself, but like, it's a very, very teeny tiny part of like, like, hi. <laughs> yeah, let's work on our book, like, when we're alone at home. Hmm. But, yeah, so. <laughs> hmm. okay. Well, that's interesting. I'm wondering if there's anything else that you would like to share, any other part of yourself, anything else about your views on Gestalt or your experiences? You know, I think we're, I just want to say that like we're forever students, like all of us, you know, yeah. So like I keep I keep learning like every day, like I keep I keep buying like some kind of like, you know, like lectures and seminars, like I keep, <laughs> I, I was about to say like I keep entertaining myself like with all <laughs> those new knowledge and like, yeah, because like it's, it's actually it's pleasure to keep learning. And I think like it's it's a blessing like in like in our profession you know just like to to keep with the flow every time and like not not to be bored ever yeah. no, you you don't strike me as a person who would be bored you seem to go very fast so really yeah <laughs> surprisingly i i just looked at the time i was like oh oh well that was very quick okay <laughs> Okay. Well, if there's nothing else that, that you'd like to add, um, it's been very nice to meet with you and I appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you very much. And like, I'm really grateful for including me in the project. No, no problem. It's, it's been a pleasure. So if that's thank okay you. with you, we'll leave it here. I think so. Okay. Thank you.